Hi everyone, welcome back to Rotor Dynamics 101. Today we'll cover how compressor is assembled. Here we have the back to back centrifugal compressor. High pressure and specialty gas compressors typically feature split casing. The casing shape and thickness vary depending on the operating pressure. Let's look at the diaphragm bundle here. This horizontal split bundles help to direct gas flow and accommodate high pressure applications. The O-ring slot ensures a tight seal when the lower half of the diaphragm bundle is closed, keeping internal pressure contained. Typically made from cast iron, steel, or stainless steel, these diaphragms are horizontally split to facilitate assembly and maintenance. Special aerodynamic design in diaphragms guide gas flow smoothly to the impellers, minimizing vortex formation that could reduce efficiency. Bolt locks the diffuser in place within the diaphragm bundle, preventing movement during assembly. Labyrinth seals are installed between the diaphragm diffusers and rotor impellers to prevent gas leak and ensure tight seals. These seals are also split in half for easier assembly and maintenance. Centerline lock screw keep the seal secure in place. Removable labyrinth seals prevent reverse gas flow and reduce leakage, ensuring efficient operation even under high pressure conditions. The rotor assembly features closed type impellers, which are shrink fitted and keyed to the shaft for secure operation under high stresses. Balancing drum helps mitigate thrust forces during operation, ensuring the rotor remains stable and efficient under pressure. Spacer rings, locked rings, and other components ensure the rotor assembly remains secure and balanced throughout the compressor operation. A special gearbox connects the compressor drive shaft to the motor, transmitting rotational energy through a coupling system. The coupling hubs are force-fitted to the shaft and ensure smooth transition of motion between connected shafts. The compressor uses general bearings along with the thrust bearing system. The tilting pad bearings are used for thrust management. The journal bearings are carefully installed to support the rotor's rotation, with dedicated bearings for both the drive and non-drive ends. The thrust bearing is positioned in its housing and utilizes tilting pads to manage axial forces, ensuring stability during high load conditions. Some bearing pads are equipped with thermocouples for real-time temperature monitoring, vital for preventing overheating. The bearings may also include load cells to measure axial thrust in high pressure environments, enhancing reliability and performance. The seals around the rotor help minimize gas leak while also preventing the ingress of air, both crucial for system integrity. With the rotor in place, we begin the assembly of a diaphragm bundle into the compressor casing ensuring a proper alignment with the journal bearings. The diaphragm bundle is carefully lowered into the position within the casing, guided by special tracks to maintain precise alignment. The installation process uses a hydraulic jack to push the diaphragm bundle into place, maintaining proper spacing and alignment throughout. Once the diaphragm bundle is in position, we remove the installation tools to prepare for the next steps in compressor assembly. The suction, discharge, and the head covers are carefully fitted, taking special care not to damage the balancing drum or seals in place. A specialized lifting tool is used to align and center the head cover, ensuring it aligns perfectly with the casing and rotor. After securing the head cover in place with the side brackets, we proceed to ensure everything is securely bolted down for safe operation. The next step is to ensure the rotor assembly is centered within the diaphragm bundle 
and securely locked in place. Afterwards, the dry gas seal is installed using a set screw to fix it to the head cover. The gas seals ensure no leakage or air ingress during operation, crucial for maintaining system efficiency and reliability. Finally, the third stage seal is installed following the same procedure as the gas seal. Finally, the non-drive end bearing is installed into the compressor, followed by force-fitting the thrust bearing collar onto the rotor. A fixture with two hydraulic pumps are used. High pressure to expand the collar's inner diameter and low pressure to push it into position. To ensure a secure fit, the pressure is held for about 10 minutes before release allowing the collar material to relax. Next, the thrust bearing inboard housing is installed, followed by fitting the drive end bearing housing. Throughout these steps, care is taken to ensure the thermocouple wires on the bearings remain undamaged. Also, radio vibration probes are installed. These are mounted externally on the casing, eliminating the need to disassemble any compressor components. Finally, all thermocouples are connected to the terminal board located at the both ends of the compressor. This completes the assembly of the centrifugal compressor. That is all for today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. If you have any questions, please leave comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.